Welcome to Talk to Maps, a short story about how memory works and how a bug in MMAP was affecting Rodare for a while and how that thing was fixed recently. First of all, let me present myself. Uh, I'm Sergi Alvarez, most people know me as Pancake. I'm a research uh, mobile security engineer and I work at NowSecure. I'm the author and main contributor of Radare and I'm also a free software developer and enthusiast. Uh, let me introduce you to the MMAP story. Once upon a time we decided that using MMAP was a good idea for reading files from disk, because this was giving us some read-ahead optimizations and also it was possible to use just pointers instead of having to use uh, different syscalls just for reading portions of memory. This was reducing the amount of syscalls that we were doing, but it was also moving all the overhead to the MMU. The, pr the problem is that um, the MMU was loaded with so many other issues that we didn't think about at the time. Also, there was another good thing that using MMAP was allowing us to read real-time changes across multiple instances of R2. So this means that if you have the same file loaded multiple times, uh, you can patch one file and you will get this modified version in the other sessions, which was pretty cool and useful. The problem is that we cannot get notified of when the file changes. This means that uh, there is some time to access and time to use problems that maybe can cause some sick falls, some sick bugs, or even some misbehaviors. So, Let's dig deep uh, on that and try to understand how that works. So the bug was initially found by um, Adriana Castro, who is uh, Australia InfoSec Exchange, if you want to reach her. Uh, she ended up with this stupid one-liner that looks like simple, but at the end it was like uh, spotting a really deep bug inside her too. So let's understand better how to decouple this one-liner. First of all, we are using our tool and then passing the flags. Minus Q, it means that it will be quitting after running the command. Then we open the file with write mode using the minus W, and then we run the given command. The minus C flag it takes a common as an argument, and then we specify the file that we want to work on. So the file, it's A, it's the name A. And the command we basically run is what the fuck a uh, dollar dollar at five and then we print 32 bytes. What's the problem here? Okay, if you observe, we are reading a file, modifying it and then seeking and showing that at the same time. What's the problem? The problem is that if you change the contents of a file, it will be modifying it. And as long as we are writing less data, so this means that it's basically truncating the contents of the file into a shorter version of that, and printing the bytes after that, it's basically accessing memory outside the boundaries of the original MMAP. So this was basically causing a sick bus. And yeah, we can maybe handle the sick bus as a valid signal and get um, and use set jump to recover from the crash. But that's probably not a good idea. So I was trying to find out the best solution and I ended up like doing like a quick fix which was implemented in the uh, comments below. And also I then I did some more research and did a better implementation of this. The problem is that there is no real need for using a map nowadays. Let's understand better how that works. So at the beginning, the first quick fix I did was basically uh, adding fstat calls and using flock, to, which is a file lock uh, blocker that was basically allowing me to create um, a context that the file will not be modified while I was working on that. This means that the memory will be basically catching the contents until it gets modified. And when it's modified, I will get the new map reloaded with a different size. The problem of that is that I'm holding many other syscalls in the process. This means that it's slower. And also, we are still having a talk to problem, because if any other process that is not R2 or it's not using the same file lock operations, it will be causing another risk condition here. So, can we have like an atomic MMAP? Uh, probably not. So, 
let's start with the proof of concept. So we have a couple of programs. Uh, first program is uh, reading a file in a loop, counting all the bytes, and then uh, and counting the, the final result. And then there is another program that basically truncates this file while the other program is running. And then the other program, the A, crashes with the SIGBAS. Uh, you can read in the man page what SIGBAS is all about. Now we're in the shell, so let's see how that bug works. So we have the demo for macOS, we have the same demo in Linux. This is a Linux machine. And this is a macOS machine. So let's go into the Linux truncate code. We build the thing and we get a crash. We get the sick bus and we're basically working on this file. So let's read the source code first. We have the reader, which is just a program that can handle or not the sick bus symbol, uh, signal. And then we have like um, the, the code that is basically reading forever the bytes. After uh, so it opened the file and uses a map over the file descriptor using map shared and prod read, and then it's reading the data. The problem is that this file is truncated with this other program, and we basically call truncate. And truncate is basically reducing the size to file the file to zero and then writing hello, which is uh, only six characters in there. Uh, so the second program, as long as it's trying to read bytes outside the boundaries of the original file, it will be crashing. Okay, we have the demo in Linux, let's check the demo on macOS. And you will see that the same behavior happens here. We get the sick bus, so it's crashing both sides. So, let's continue. So, what's a bus? Uh, a bus is basically trying to access a bad memory. So can we have atomic operations in a map? Uh, I don't think so. Can we get notified? Nope. Can we use logs? Uh, well, if all the file, all the programs accessing the logs at uh, the files are using file log, then we can do that. But kind of no, because if you're exporting this file system over NFS, for example, that won't be a, a file locket, so it will be failing again. And also, all these kind of file lock operations depend on the kind of file system you are using, and uh, also it's not portable across all the Unix operating systems. Um, is there any other software affected? Um, yep. So I will see another program that is affected with this pro uh, bug. But first of all, let's try to understand how MMAP works. MMAP takes an address, takes the length, the protection that we want this map to be uh, loaded, some flags with basically uh, defining the how we want to map this thing, the file descriptor associated with this memory, and then the offset starting from this file descriptor. Then we can use msync to basically synchronize the contents from the file into, into the map, and then we have moon map, which is basically uh, deallocating the memory map. Remember Raspberry K? Uh, this syscall was at the beginning of Unix used for implementing heaps allocators. Uh, nowadays it's MMAP, the one that you have to use. This means that MMAP has been really over-engineered in order to support many more use cases. And every operating system is growing in a different direction. Uh, so it's, you have different implementations of different things uh, for each OS, uh, which is basically complicating the things when you are trying to write software that is portable. So, for example, in macOS, we have map shared, map private, map fixed, map anon, file, fix, etc. And the problem is that we have, uh, we, we need to focus only on these three ones, which are probably the most common out there. The first one, uh, when you map a file in a shared way, all the processes will see the changes at the same time. When you do a private map, you basically use copy and write, which means that when something happens there, it gets synchronized up to the process. This is kind of like atomic operations, but it's not really atomic. And the main problem is that POSIX doesn't specify how that should be working, which means this is undefined behavior. And this is kind of another problem when you're trying to build this and use MMAP on different Unix systems. 
Then we have map fixed, which means that it's only it's mandatory to map the uh, the file descriptor on the specific address that you have given. It's basically a uh, mandatory rule that MMAP should be doing, not just a hint. Otherwise, MMAP will be giving you a different address every time that you map the file. So let's go into Linux. Uh, as you can see, there is many more flags here. We not just have the map share, but we also have the validate, the 32-bit, and on then I write, there is also the anonymous, which was kind of like deprecated version of Anon. Then we have the non-block, non-reserve, map file, map fixed, etc. And you can see it's really overcomplicated. And actually there is more discussions about how that should be working. And it's on discussion about adding the map nosic bus, which basically introduced some uh, extra features, which means that when you are trying to access uh, a memory map address that was not allocated with the file because the file has changed, it won't be erasing a SIG bus. This was probably fixing the issue it was facing. The problem is that this is not yet there and also it was not uh, portable because no other operating system was implementing that feature. So let's see the deal open. How works um, on Linux and why operating systems are not affected by this problem. So I don't know if you ever tried to update um, uh, uh, the software that you're running and sometimes you get a sick fault just because the package was updated while we we're running the program. Well, this is because the package was wrongly implemented. This means that in Unix, the correct way for installing software is using the install um, uh, program. The install program just removes the files and copies the new version of it. This means that if the file descriptor was associated with the old one, it will be basically uh, keeping in memory the old map with the copy and write operation. But if you use install, you will basically remove that and copy the new one, which is correct. Otherwise, it will be modifying in place the library. And what happens here? Well, deal open is basically loading the maps of all the file shared libraries using um, uh, uh, map shared option, which means that you can basically modify anything in disk and you will get the changes happening uh, at runtime. So let's see the demo. Uh, we have the first terminal uh, on the demo Linux deal open and we'll compile the thing. So let's first understand how that looks like. We have a host program that is using the hello function from a library. And then we have a couple of libraries. So we have the first one, which is exposing that. And then we have the second library, which is printing a different message. It's, at the end, it's just the same thing, but just printing different messages. So if we compile the thing, we can see that we are just loading the library path from the local directory and the program is linking against libdemo. Okay, so we are printing a B1, and now from the second terminal, we'll just go into the same directory and open this file, the libdemo.so, in write mode. Okay, from here, let's expand the split and let's understand how that works. So we can search for B1, we have the hit, and in this point, we are basically seeing the string that is printed in memory. So let's just press plus sign so we can increment the value and we can basically change the text that is printed in there. As you can see, the deal open still using what's mapped in uh, from the disk. Okay, so maybe you can think that this is just affecting data. If the file gets modified, it won't be affecting uh, the code section. So let's try into the hello symbol. So what happens here? We have the simple function that is printing the string that it's in the hit zero and using puts to print that text. You see the text still printed there. So what I will do is just replace the first instruction and use a red. And you can see that this function is now doing nothing. It's just returning. This means that we can code inject if we modify any of the libraries that are in the system. Okay, so let's think about uh, file system logs and how can we emulate atomicity uh, use, uh, trying to reduce the talk to times. So 
Uh, we can use flock, which is a file lock, and we can use lock X and lock shared. Uh, the problem is that this is not portable, it doesn't work the same way uh, on all the operating systems, and also it doesn't work well if you use that through the network. Then we can also use the, um, the file descriptor control uh, set lock, which allows you to define a lock on a specific region of bytes. This means that uh, when you are before reading, you can basically lock the amount of region that you want to read and it will be cached in memory, so it won't be uh, giving you uh, an error. It will be copying that data before getting that accessed. And then we, we can use the pre-read and pre-write syscalls instead of using the uh, seek and the read operations. This means that in a single syscall, you can specify the offset inside the file that you want to read and then uh, read that. Uh, and the reason for that is because if you use two different syscalls, you can be seeking to an address that doesn't exist and the second operation will be failing, but the first one will be successing. Uh, so we're basically trying to reduce the amount of syscalls to access some resources and trying to reduce the amount of problems that can happen when this uh, is, is happening. So and then we can also use a different uh, another um, uh, uh, map flag, so which is called an write, which allows you to uh, specify that you want you don't want to uh, allow modification of files when the program is being executed. Uh, this only happens on executables, um, so it won't be affecting like file, normal files and so on, so that's also not a, a solution for that. So portability. So we export the um, how MMAP works on Linux, how that works on macOS, and provide some over-engineered solutions that didn't really solve the real problem. Uh, there is a lot of non-portable flags. We saw that POSIX is not really specifying how that should be working in all the cases. And yeah, let's talk about Windows because Windows is not affected by that because in Windows you cannot open a file that is being mapped. So actually when you map a file using the create file, create file mapping, the contents of this file don't, cannot be uh, read or written because the simple open will be failing. Uh, that's a limitation, but it's a kind of protecting that and it's a little bit safer, but it's actually not good. So what else can we do? Well, we have Madvice. Madvice is a way to advise kind of giving some hints to the memory maps. And we can specify that we want to have some read ahead optimizations, access types and disable the swap. Like for example, we can enable um, at the map private uh, for a specific region, or we can specify that we want to prefetch the data using the build need. Uh, it's portable, not really. Uh, so what else with the, can we do here? So at this point, we have the short solution, which means uh, reduce the talk to window. Uh, that's what we already have. And the long-term solution, which is the next step, is basically keep this MMAP URL as an IO plugin that works. Uh, but it's not the default one. So when you open a file, it won't be using the memmap uh, colon slash slash. It will be using the standard EO colon slash slash. Um, actually, nowadays, the kernels optimize the read ahead optimizations um, using the standard EO, like open read, seek, and so on. So you don't really need to use MMAP for optimization for performance reasons. And also the main reason for not switching to that because there is a, a pull request doing the change uh, is that there is like four test breaking. So uh, when I get to fix the buffer implementation on top of this, it should be passing all tests correctly and we'll be switching to that and uh, hopefully get like two weeks optimizations on, on working with files. And finally getting all this problem of uh, non-atomicity uh, with MMAP files. So I will publish all the source code for the demos in the GitHub repository of the conference, and if you have any questions, just reach me out in the Fediverse. Thanks for watching.